What's up guys, Carlos here again, and um, today we're going to talk about five things that you should know before getting an oil change done to your car, uh, and I should probably word that better, going to buy an oil change, because this doesn't really apply if you are doing your old oil changes, um, uh, but you might learn something anyway. Uh, getting your oil change is something that you're going to have to do as long as you own an internal combustion engine type of car which is still the majority out there um yeah the intervals have gotten larger but you still got to get your oil change so this information could be very valuable to you it can save you money it can save you headaches in the long run okay so five points all right number one don't go to a jiffy loop okay find yourself a good technician um, the problem with Jiffy Lubes is that there's a lot of entry-level type of techs that uh, that work there. They're all newbies, um, very inexperienced, and many times, I mean, Jiffy Lube itself doesn't pay that much, so many times a lot of, of people uh, uh, come in and out of there very often, um, and I'm talking about employees and mechanics in, in general. Um, so what happens is, even if you decide to pick a Jiffy Lube and go there often, um, chances are the same person won't be working on your car. They they have like a, a factory setup, you know, and uh, so it's it's hard for them to. It's going to be too many different eyes looking at your car every time they're going to try to upsell you something. It's going to be hard for it to match. It's it's more difficult if you go to a mechanic that actually knows what they're doing, um, and is experienced. Then you can use that for not only oil changes but for any time something comes up with your car um by them doing the oil changes they get to keep an eye on your car and then you guys can keep like a list of things to do to your car or things that your car needs and things you should keep an eye on and and things of that nature so having them do an oil change would be way better because they get to not only change your oil but and it's getting done right because they know what they're doing, but they also can keep an eye on the rest of your car and you can do preemptive work rather than emergency repairs, you know, so it's much more beneficial that way. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you just got to go to a Jiffy Lube, you got to get it done. And I understand that, like, I, I, I get it, but finding a good tech to take over all your car needs is the best way to go always okay number two is knowing what oil your car takes now you'll hear me say this in my videos millions and millions of times and i'm gonna keep saying it your owner's manual tells you everything if you don't have the owner's manual to your car because it's an old car or whatever you can do a quick google search and literally type in the year make and model of your car and then owner's manual and a PDF file will more than likely pop up and you can just download it. You don't have to print it because most of them are like 600 pages, like ridiculous amount. You don't need to print it. It's a Google search away. And you can literally go through the PDF file and know everything you need to know. Knowing the weight of the, the oil that your car requires is extremely important because when you go to a place, you don't know if they know the oil. You don't even know if they carry the oil weight that your car requires. So being there and demanding it, they, they have no choice but to go out of their way or tell you, man, we don't have that oil. And that's extremely important because if you, if you don't have the correct weight of oil in your engine, you can cause all types of engine problems later on in the life of the, of the engine. Um, um, if you go too thick, you can have oil pressure issues. If you go too, too low, um, you can have oil pressure issues. It's it's, and oil pressure is something that is very delicate in any engine. If it's if it goes too low or too high, it can do lots of damage. So, to prevent it, just use what is required. Right. Um, not only that, but sometimes you may be sold into some type of oil that's special or something, and it's probably bad for your engine. Uh, like additives and things like that. And the owner's manual most of the time tells you stay away from any additives, but the Jiffy Lube is trying to sell you this additive because, you know, uh, it's good for your engine. 
the owner's manual knows what's good for your engine. So if you actually go through it, you would save yourself tons of money, even on oil changes. Okay. See, number three. Um, I think it's important that you know how to check your oil and that you at least know where the oil filter on your car is. Now, the reason I say this is because it's very good to always check that they did the work. Uh, because you might end up going to one of these Jiffy Lube places in a quick hurry, or you haven't found that mechanic yet, um, or I should really say technician, um, you need to make sure that what you paid for is getting done. And the reason I say that is because I've ran into situations before in the field where a customer would come and it and say they have engine noise or whatever and then i go and i check the engine oil and it looks like it hasn't been changed in like twenty thousand miles and then the customer comes back with records of a good year or a jiffy lube and it's filled with with you know the records of him actually going to a place to changing the oil the oil filter is so old it's ridiculous but he never actually checked the oil himself. He kept taking it to his bat to this place, and there happened to be somebody working there who was just not doing the oil changes or not changing the filter or just changing the oil and not the filter or just changing the filter and not the oil, or, or you know, whichever order which would cause these problems anyway. And all because the customer didn't check the oil to make sure that it was changed. And now he's the one that's stuck there because he's gonna have to. It's, it's gonna have to try to prove it when he never even checked the oil. How is he supposed to know? Um, so it's very important that you know how to check your oil. There's a dipstick. You pull it out. Make sure that the oil at least looks clean. It looks brownish gold, like kind of transparent. No, kind of no, transparent, um, uh, and not black. If it's black or dark brown of any sort. The oil's old. If you just got the oil change, it should be very transparent. Um, I'll post up some pictures so that you guys can see exactly the difference between old oil and new oil. Then you should find your oil filter and figure out where it is in the car. You could do that with a quick Google search as well. Uh, do a couple images and, and, and an oil filter will come out and then an oil filter is just a, in some cases a metallic casing and some other cases you have them inside a cover uh, which if that's the case you can mark those as well and see if they were turned or not um, um, and you can go to the oil filter and mark it somewhere and make sure that it was changed or just look it to see if it's dirty and if a new one was put in place so you, you find your own technique to make sure that the oil filter was changed um, it's very important. Okay. Let's see. Then, um, number four, this is a good one. Remember that your, if your car is equipped with an oil life, uh, monitor, which is pretty much on your dashboard. It tells you when you need to change your oil, a little reminder will come on. Um, it's important. It's important for you to know that that has nothing to do with the actual oil that's inside your car. So if that light is still on doesn't mean that the oil wasn't changed it just means that they never reset the timer so what you have to do in that situation is just take it back and tell them hey no one reset the thing and then they reset it right there um those those uh reminders they work off timers which pretty much they run off all the all the information from the computers and it runs it off time, um, uh, miles, speed, all of that. And it goes by a calculation and it, it'll actually determine the life of the oil. So it's pretty accurate, but it's only accurate if it was reset when the oil change was done. Um, uh, but I think it's important that you know they have nothing to do with each other because I've also had customers come in throwing a fit like, hey, the oil wasn't changed. Once again, they didn't even check to see if the oil was actually changed. And they're saying it hasn't been changed because that light wasn't reset. And they have nothing to do with each other. So I'm just trying to <laughs> prevent you from looking like a, an idiot in the middle of the shop because that happens very often. Um, um, and yes, the mechanic should have absolutely remembered to reset it. But 
hey, we're all human and no one's perfect. And I guarantee you'll run into someone again that won't reset it. Now, if you find yourself a good tech, he probably will never forget. But even he might slip up one time. I guarantee it. Um, I know I've had my fair share of those slip ups as well. Um, and then um, let's see. Number five. Yeah. Number five is. If you're going to go get your oil change done at a specific shop, a Jiffy Lube of that sort, because you have no choice or you haven't found your tech yet, like I've mentioned before, um, avoid the weekends. The weekends is the busiest time for any shop because that's when people don't work. That's when people go in. But if you can avoid it by any means necessary, then do so. Because what happens is technicians get mechanics get a little overwhelmed during the weekends and sometimes they'll have a line of 20 some cars and they'll start to rush and that doesn't mean that the car's not getting done correctly but they're starting to rush so that's something to keep in mind one two you're going to be waiting for a while even if they tell you 30 minutes it's in most cases it's unrealistic and some of the guys will have like you know a line of five or six cars and an oil change takes at least 15 minutes, even if you're that fast. Like, so you're going to wait, okay? If you go on a Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, like, you know, go into work a little later, you'd be amazed how in and out you'd, you'd get, you know? And that's because they're sitting around. They probably don't have that much work at that time. So the middle of the week is the best time. Um, even Mondays are hectic because they're still doing work from leftover from the weekend. So I would probably try Tuesdays, Wednesdays, even Thursdays and just try during the middle of the week and you'll see how you'll get in and out. Um, even even if you find yourself a mechanic like or a tech, you know, somebody that's certified, somebody that really knows what they're doing and he, he's, he's the keeper of your car. I'm sure if you were to ask him, he'd probably tell you, yeah, the weekends are are probably the busiest times. You know, if it's not, then great you know but you have that communication you know if you're just going to any shop I, I, I guarantee tuesdays and wednesdays is probably their slowest days and it's simply because everybody's working you know um, um but you know you make that decision depending on how much time you're willing to to waste whether you can take the time off work and and all that but if you can avoid the weekends do it the outcome of your car is going to be better. They're going to have more time to even look at your car. Um, uh, make sure it needs things, whatever. Uh, make sure that nothing is, is, you know, safety hazard or whatever. They can actually inspect your car, uh, change the oil, and it's done with time and done correctly. You know, things of that nature. Um, but those are the five things that I strongly recommend you should know. And I hope you learned them. If you have any questions, you can email me at educatedgreasemonkey at gmail.com. And of course, of course, you can find me on all my social media platforms, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Periscope. And, you know, hit me a follow up, follow me, send me a message, ask away, you know, and uh, I'll try to answer. Till next time, guys. Deuces.